There's a line in the Guardian Amrita Sutta that's sometimes translated as not holding to fixed views. And I've been tempted to take that translation and send it into the people who collect fake Buddhist quotes, because the word fixed doesn't appear in the passage. There's no place where the Buddha says fixed views are bad in and of themselves. There's right view and there's wrong view. But it's not the case that wrong view is fixed and right view is not fixed. The difference lies someplace else. After all, one of the adjectives that describes someone who's attained the stream is someone who's become consonant in view. They've seen the Four Noble Truths really are true. Their confidence, conviction in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha has been confirmed. That's the point where view really is right. Of course, you don't stop there. You learn how to use it properly to keep, take you even further. What this means in practice is, as, as we're starting out, our views are not quite right yet. We have a general idea. The Buddha talks about the Four Noble Truths. He talks about the basic teaching that skillful qualities should be developed and unskillful ones should be abandoned. Those are categorical truths. In other words, true across the board. There's never any place where the Buddha defines suffering, say, in other terms, aside from the five clinging aggregates. He never says that they're the end of suffering. There's no place where he defines right resolve, say, as being resolved on sensuality. And certain things are right and certain things are wrong. And even though we're coming from ignorance, when we start on the path, we have some idea. And we use that. And then we simply refine our understanding. And so in that sense, we don't want to hold to our earlier understanding of what the views are. Because after all, they're meant to be used. And as they're used, they get further refined. Remember what the Four Noble Truths have to say about right view. It's interesting the Four Truths are a right view, but they also say that their position is as part of the path. In other words, something to be developed, and as you develop right view, it, it's meant to develop right resolve, right speech, right action, all the way down through right concentration. These are views that are meant to be used. And as you use them, you get to know them better. That's what one way of knowing that your views are right, is you know the right use for them, and actually use them that way. And as you begin to get results, and find that as you develop the path, it does lead to something deathless. That's when your right view has been confirmed. And it doesn't change from that point on. Now again, the Buddha himself goes beyond right view. But when he's teaching right view to others, it's always the same. So in that sense, it's fixed. The same with the principle of developing skillful qualities and abandoning unskillful ones. His teachings are always consistent on those points. As for some of his other teachings, they have their time and place. There was a monk one time who was asked, what is the result of action? And he said the result of action is stress, dukkha. And the person asking the question said, well, this is the first time I've ever heard a Buddhist monk say that. You better go check that with the Buddha. So he goes back, first talks to Venerable Ananda, and then Venerable Ananda takes him to see the Buddha. And another monk is listening in. So when the Buddha rebukes the first monk for having said that all action leads to stress, 
the monk was sitting and says, well, maybe he was thinking of the fact that action leads to feeling, and all feelings are stressful. And the Buddha tells him, that's not the time to use that teaching. When you're asked about action, you talk about the three kinds of feeling. They're pleasure, pain, neither pleasure nor pain. So the teaching on all fabricated things being stressful is not always useful. It's not always right. Of course, there are the many teachings on using yourself as your mainstay, using yourself as your governing principle. If you try to bring in the teaching on not-self and say, well, everything's supposed to be not-self, how can you use the self as a mainstay or a governing principle? That would be bringing the, that teaching in at the wrong time, the wrong place. You have to understand the teachings and the three characteristics of the three perceptions in the context of the duties of the Four Noble Truths, when they're appropriate, when they're useful for abandoning your abandoning your craving, comprehending your clinging. But when you're trying to develop a path, you use those perceptions only on things that would pull you off the path. You don't tell yourself, well, concentration is stressful. Concentration is not self, therefore I'll let go of it. But that's true on one level, but it's not true when you're trying to develop concentration. That's not the time to use it. So this is one area where you want to make sure that your views are not fixed in the sense of trying to apply a teaching across the board when it's not meant to be applied across the board. There was a monk one time who, after reading about emptiness, told his mother, well, the Dharma teaches that you're not really my mother, because there's really nobody there. And his mother looked at him and said, well, if anybody knows who's your mother, I'm the one. They don't know. And she was the one who was right at that point. And it's a matter of knowing the right time and the right place, and teachings like that. As for the Four Noble Truths, they are true across the board, and they don't change. It's one of the meanings of the word noble. Noble in the sense that it's universal. It's true for everybody, everywhere. It's not true only in India, or only in one part of India. These are truths that are true all through time, all through space. So in that sense, they're fixed. It's your relationship to them that you have to watch out for, especially as you're getting started on the path. You have to keep reminding yourself, right view is there, not to beat other people off over the head. It's to help you understand where you're going to look to see your own ignorance. And what you've got to do in order to do that. You develop mindfulness, you develop alertness, so you can see things a lot more clearly. This is the, the big problem. We're trying to battle ignorance, but where are we coming from? We're coming from ignorance of ourselves. It's the path where it seems like the blind are leading the blind. But fortunately, there is a part of the mind that has some clarity. That's what the Buddha meant when he said that the mind is luminous. It can watch itself. And so you apply your understanding of what the Four Noble Truths are particularly when you're developing the path, and you really commit to it. But then you reflect, am I getting the results I want? And if I'm not, is the problem with the path or is the problem with me, my understanding of the path? And in the beginning you go on the assumption that it's your understanding. That's the problem. So you look again, act again, look again. Remember what the Buddha said about how that the Dharma is developed. It's developed through commitment and reflection. You commit to doing it, and then you reflect on what you're doing. Make adjustments. That way, by observing yourself, you begin to cut through a lot of your ignorance.
So it's not just reflecting, it's reflecting together with commitment. Watching yourself in action. That's how you arrive at views that really are certain. In fact, that's one of the adjectives that's used to describe someone who's attained this stream. They're certain. Their right view is certain, and their future is certain they're going to gain awakening for sure. That much is fixed. So to have, try to have a clear sense of when the Buddha is talking about right view, which things are true across the board, which things are true at certain times, certain stages of the practice, and be alive to the fact that as long as you haven't yet attained the first taste of the deathless, you haven't gained the Dharma eye, your views still need work. But you don't work on them by theorizing. You work on them by committing to what you understand the path to be, and then reflecting. This quality of the reflection it's going to carry you all the way through. If you don't learn how to reflect on what you're doing, you're going to miss a lot of things. Like that person who was said in the letter to John Fu that he was practicing seeing everything as in constant stressful, not self. He watched TV, he engaged in all of his daily activities looking for things being stressful, in constant, not self. And John Fu told me to write back to him and say, those are not the problem. The problem is, who is it that's telling them that they are in constant stressful not-self? That's where the real problem lies, because it's the inconstancy of the mind that's the problem, the stress caused by the mind. That's the problem, the mind holding on to things it really shouldn't hold on to. So how do you watch the mind? How do you do that? Well, you get the mind to do something and watch it in action. You get it to commit, then you reflect. And that's how you get past your ignorance. <laughs>